Hello, and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement Series. My name is Sarah Utsugi, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator at Saratech, and I'll be your host today. Presenting today, we have Marla Niebles, Saratech Mechanical Engineer, and she'll be talking to you about solid edge tricks you should know, but probably don't. All right. Hi, Marla. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Sarah. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Will you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Saratech? Yes, so hello all. Um, my name is Marlene Niebles and I'll be your presenter for today. Um, I've actually been at Saratech now for a year where I began as an intern for six months. Um, I've had the opportunity to work on the Moog, SNC, and Relativity Space project in my time at Saratech, as well as aiding customers in software related questions. So that's a little bit about me. Um, thank you for listening and now I'll begin the presentation. Okay, so to start off the goal of this presentation, um, Solid Edge is a popular software with great features that allows modeling to be a smoother process. I will be showing you all some tips and tricks that you may or may not be aware of in sheet metal and will be useful to you in the future. So for the agenda, um, today I will be discussing transitional lofted sheet metal parts and the part to sheet metal command. I will be going over where to find these built-in features in Solid Edge and how users can take these models and use them to their advantage. I will also show a couple of demonstrations on how to use the built-in templates and where they can be found on your system. So to start off, um, transitional sheet metal, um, lofted sheet metal. So Solid Edge provides the user three built-in lofted sheet metal templates that are useful to start off if one does not have, um, um, has very little or no knowledge of solid edge. Um, so some of the templates are round to round, square to round, and square to square. So these templates can actually be found in your program files, and I will show later in this presentation um, where exactly they are. Some advantages of using these are obviously you can use these as templates to start off, and these will save you time as well. So these types of transitional lofting can be used for HVAC, which include ductwork, ventilation, exhaust hoods, um, and they're also used in industrial and many other applications. So now let's move on to the first lofted sheet metal template. So for the round to round. So to start off, um, this is a template that Solid Edge provides us as a user. So right now I'm just hiding the sketches um, and the bodies. So I'm going over how exactly they built it out for us. So they start off with the bottom sketch and in these sketches, you do have to have the same amount of components um, within both so that you do have a smoother transition um, for that lofted part. So notice here, this only has one component and we do have that um, split edge there in the cutout. Um, the top sketch is now shown and similarly, I went ahead and edited the sketch and notice how there is also just one component. Um, we leave this little small gap here that I zoomed into so that we can loft those parts. Um, so now I will go ahead and show you the entire body and how it is lofted. Notice here that gap is still there. Um, and then there's also a flat pattern feature within there that I will show right now. So these templates are so great, which allow the user to open the template in a minute that would normally take us five to 10 minutes using the synchronous technology that Solid Edge provides a user. One of my favorite things when modeling in Solid Edge is that it's so easy to create a part, or in this case, um, the sheet metal transition. Solid Edge has allowed me to create my designs faster and cleaner, and I've become a faster designer since I started using Solid Edge. So now I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you and kind of discuss how exactly this um, was built in Solid Edge. So this is a step-by-step -step of the round-to-round -round template. So to start off, I created that sketch on the bottom plane. And using the synchronous technology, I was able to um, lock onto the sketch here. I selected the sketch, hit control, and dragged up. Notice here, um, I'm going to lock onto the sketch now. And I was able to add in some concentric features so that um, it locks onto that bottom sketch and there's no movement. I modified the size of this circle here. And notice those are both one component as well, like I mentioned in the first, in the previous slide. So now I'm just, I modified to order and I went into the lofted flank tool. 
Um, I select the edges here. We do have to select the same edge so that we have a uh, very smooth transition for that lofted feature. So notice here I selected opposing edges. So I went ahead and reselected after that just to get a smoother um, sheet metal part. So here I selected both edges. Notice there I made sure that I selected each edge correctly. And we go ahead and get the preview. You can select the way you want it to create the body. And here I just selected inward. Um, notice here we do have that gap still. And I also created the flat pattern. So notice I went into the flatten within the modeling group. And there it is. So it was very simple to create this flat pattern. Obviously, this saves you time using the template, but this is just kind of a breakdown of how you would create it if you did not have that template built in. So now I'm just going to demonstrate um, one other template that they offer in Solid Edge is the square to round template. Um, so I will go ahead and begin that. So similarly, notice we do have um, the bottom sketch here. Um, it is a square, but here we do have nine components. So notice here, I'm just zooming in and showing you that there are nine components um, within this template, um, meaning obviously the top sketch has to also have those nine components, correct? And so we go in and open the top sketch here. And I went ahead and edited that sketch. And here there are also nine components. There are four large components um, and then five other smaller components. So notice here, I'm just showing you. And these components, obviously, whenever you're creating Let's say you have different shapes. Um, you always have to make sure that you do have the same components on both of those sketches because you do want that lofted part to be transitioned correctly and have a smoother um, transition throughout. So here it is. And we do also have that gap similar to the round to round. Here I just showed you a larger view. We do also have the height sketch, the y-axis sketch, and the x-axis sketch and then the flat pattern as well. Here, I'm just showing you that, and then there's a top view of that as well. So these templates are really useful in saving you time, and obviously it goes to show how well Solid Edge works for the user and how user-friendly it is. Um, it also saves time. Obviously, it may not seem like it's a lot of time, but Overall, if you're building 10 parts, right, you're going to save so much more time by using these templates and using them rather than creating the same part over and over. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and show you where to find these templates. Okay, so where are these templates located? So we're going to navigate to our C drive and we're going to go into our program files. We'd go into Siemens, Solid Edge, Training, and Sheet Metal. And that is where you could find that. I can also provide you the path. Um, here are the three templates that I discussed previously in the slides. I didn't show the square to square because I felt like the round to round and square to round were a little bit more um, useful to show, uh, but it's pretty, very similar. You would just have to take into account, obviously, to make sure those two sketches have the same components as well, like I discussed. Um, but this is the path that you would um, go to to find those templates, um, if you don't know that already. I can also provide that at the end of my presentation if anyone would like that path. So now I'm going to discuss the part to sheet metal command. So just to close it off a little bit, um, modeling in Solid Edge is made easy um, with the built-in templates. Overall, it will save the user time when modeling, as you saw in the previous demos. Um, so now I'm going to go into the part to sheet metal command and some cool shortcuts while using this feature. So sometimes it can be easier to convert an existing part model to a sheet metal part rather than making it in the sheet metal environment, which in turn maximizes time. Solid Edge allows you to import parts and also convert them to sheet metal, which is crucial during the design process. It can also be used with parts that have features like thin walls or rounds or a combination of both. 
Okay, so now I will be going over how to use the part to sheet metal command. So for this demonstration, I went ahead and used the box tool. Um, this is a really cool feature within Solid Edge that allows you to create sketches and it transitions you straight into um, extruding that. So notice here I created that box in less than a second. Um, and here as well, I'm creating a step here. So now I went ahead and went into the ordered mode and go into tools. And then I was able to use the part to sheet metal command here. So my favorite part of this specific command is that it allows the user to create a part within the most used interface. So obviously the synchronous um, modeling is the most used interface within Solid Edge. And I would believe that most people are familiar with it. Um, I was able to model and then switch to the ordered modeling mode here. Notice here, I'm just showing you the different corners that um, it offers whenever you're creating a sheet metal part. The box feature that I used is also very useful because as you may have noticed, you can create a sketch in a couple of clicks. When I was learning Solid Edge, I found that it was easy to use this while knowing the basic interface. Right here, I'm showing you the overlap ratio. I just set it to one and then I removed it. I found that it was also easy to use this to create the sheet metal part by still using the most common interface, which avoids confusion in the end, right? And so here we're also able to um, take this sheet metal part and take it into synchronous modeling. So here I moved it to synchronous and notice the part navigator. You now have um, all of the features. There's seven different features, all of the flanks and the tab. So here I'm just modifying to show you how easy it is to transition your part from the sheet metal environment back to the synchronous technology um, and, and you're able to use that now. So notice how I lock that dimension, the height dimension. So that would allow you to stop. Um, that would allow you so that you, you could lock that height sketch. So then it wouldn't modify unless you unlock that sketch as well. So notice here, I went ahead and unlocked it. And I'm just showing you the easy ways you can modify your part to sheet metal part once it's sheet metal. So notice here, I'm just going through and I'm dragging. And I just played around with some of the dimensions within this sheet metal part. Um, here, I'm just dragging this edge here. And it's very easy to maneuver around the body you have just created. Here I modified the height. So it's just some very simple tricks that you can use when modeling, when you're transitioning from um, the order to the synchronous modeling um, groups. So that's a little bit about the part to sheet metal command. So now some notable takeaways. So I hope that after this presentation, you're able to use these templates and continue to use Solid Edge in the most efficient way possible. So as engineers, we can be efficient in our design in the less amount of time with the use of templates and the features that I just shared with you in this presentation. These tips have helped me become faster when modeling and I enjoy it more because there are always more awesome features to learn as I go. I can say that having access to both NX and Solid Edge, I found that the synchronous technology allows me to be quicker when designing. Lastly, I would like to thank you for your time. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask them in the next slide. Great, thanks Marlene. Um, so yeah, at this time, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the questions panel and we'll address them. It does look like we have a few questions to start with. So we'll go ahead um, and answer those. The first is, are you able to start in synchronous modeling and switch to ordered? Yes, so you are. Like I mentioned in the previous slides, um, as you notice in the part to sheet metal command, I was able to actually start in the synchronous and then transition to ordered and then transition back to the synchronous. So it does save you a little bit of time. And then, um, so just answer, yes, you are able to. Great. The next question is, how is the synchronous technology useful when using these features? Oh, yeah. So Solid Edge's um, 
actually has a history free approach now that allows the user to work directly with their design. So notice how when I switch from the ordered to the synchronous on this last um, demo, uh, it modified it to the seven different features. So they were now uh, no longer, <clears throat> sorry, no longer dependent on one another. So you can actually lock the dimensions and Solid Edge will actually honor that dimension and no longer override it. But you're able to still modify it by clicking that specific dimension like I showed previously as well. Great. It looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. If you're ready to take it to the next level, Saratech offers much more than software. We have a wide variety of options for training, services, and 3D printers. So if you, if you have any questions about that, you can email us at marketing at saratech.com. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Marlon, and have a great day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.